Warning. This channel features sarcasm and jokes. If you are offended by anything, stop being offended. Smile. What's your over the board elo? Like 1600? 1500? 1400? 100? You're like 1500 over the board, right? Oh, you've only played six over the- Bro, you smurfing, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, poor guy got hit with an over the board Vienna. Dude, I gotta tell you, I feel like literally, no joke, millions of people play the Vienna now. It's, uh... Uh, I, it's my, like my bad, but also sucks to suck. All right, poor guy falls directly into the trap. Yeah, bishop e7 though. Bishop e7 is very funny. I had somebody complain about this recently. They were like, I, th somebody did this against me and then bishop h4. And I was like, yeah. And so you know what the top engine move here is? G3. That's, that's tough. The top computer move is actually to sacrifice your king safety, but the bishop is trapped. And uh, knight e4 just wins the bishop. And uh, yes, yes, guys, I, I know, I know, I know. But then d6 is strong. It's actually better to lure the bishop in and then let it get trapped. You see, if your opponent in, in that position plays d6, you just play knight e4 and the bishop is trapped. You see? Um, but anyway, yeah, d4, d6. He had no clue. Poor guy. I would just play bishop c4 now. I would just do this. Nice. 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 What's the best move after d takes e5? What do you take back with? Bishop, pawn, or knight? Trick question, you bozos. Boom. Attraction. You attract the king. Knight e5, and now it's a fork, so you can't, they can't take because it's check. Bozos. All right, bishop h5, just short castle. Don't even think about it. Nice. Uh, you can't play bishop e5 now, but you can just take. Nice. Um, I wonder if you can just take. So if you take... The, uh, so anytime, you know, you get so much development, your king is, opponent's king is still here. You gotta think if this is possible, because you're always wondering if you have some e-file check. Ah, uh, this is, yeah, this is a little sophisticated. How do you enable the movement of this knight? You have this. That's a tough move. Yeah, if you don't see that, it's a tough move. Because after queen e7, how do you continue your initiative? How do you continue to have your foot on the gas? I mean, a lot of ways, but... A little mini lesson here. Yes, knight d5. Excellent move. You force the opponent to take. Now you take with this rook. Now king d8, and... Okay, at the very least, you just have a much better endgame. It's only plus 1.8, and at the very most... You go here, and you are completely winning. You will get here, you will get there, you play g4. You're crushing. Uh, queen d3 is not a bad move, obviously. Uh, Stockfish thinks it is, because after castles, you're actually not that much better. You have to play bishop takes f6. Or knight b5. You have to create threats. Queen d3 is kind of like a little bit lackadaisical. Yeah, you gotta step on the gas. Yeah, also you helped your opponent a bit with this development. What? Okay, apparently that's winning with queens. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, I think the way you avoid moves like queen d3 in the future is like, if your opponent can attack your piece and at the same time improve their position, and I think that the bishop on g6 is better than on h5, but it's very tough to say. Very tough to say. Uh, okay, you took and then you played knight d5. Not bad. I don't think this is the right moment to take necessarily, but I also don't hate it. As long as you maybe play c3 to get a strong center. I mean, there you go. There you go, right there. Look at that. Pawn to c3. Look at that. It's a big boy move. Not calling you fat. Queen f2. 
Yeah, now you should take the bishop. And you, uh, you went from being much better to slightly better, but now you should centralize your knight. Tremendous. And uh, you're much, you, you, you have a very comfortable advantage. You have a very comfortable advantage because you have um, more active pieces. Okay, your pieces have targets. You have much more active pieces. I would say the quality of your potential five pieces are higher than your opponents. And I, and personally, I just like your center a bit more. Like, I like your structure a bit more. So you're a bit better. You're a bit better here. But not, uh, not a huge amount. I would play like A4, stop B5. But you took a bit rushed, but it is what it is. Very important uh, in chess to understand that just because your opening is winning doesn't mean you have to play for a win at all times. For example, you know that this is wrong. You know that you have like a big advantage. But you misplayed it. I mean, it, the Vienna Gambit, when accepted, gives you like a plus two position within the first ten moves. However, after that, it, it's no longer stepping the foot on the gas. You don't have to step the foot on the gas at all times. Like, you didn't play perfectly, so you could just make improving moves. I, I would not trade this knight for this bishop. I think this is the best piece on the board. Build behind it, for now. And then maybe you can even try to like use your G and H pawns, because you're very stable. What about bishop f7? That hangs a piece. Knight g6. Um, yeah, you lost all your advantage when you traded. Um, queen h4 is okay, but you, you don't have anything. Oh! That looks pretty... pretty nice. That looks pretty good. The computer also f oh wow. You know how good your position is here with this bishop? This is not stoppable. That's crazy. That's why it's plus two. They just can't stop it. If they play rookie six, then take, 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 and you win the endgame. What's the best move here for white? What's funny is that. Taking is probably fine, but drawing chances increase substantially. The best move is queen e4. And then just keep creating threats and problems. This is a queen and rook endgame right here. It's a nice little endgames masterclass example. Queen e4, bring the rook. No need to rush. You only need to simplify in endgames if you're guaranteeing yourself a victory. Which is covered in the middle games master... Ah, uh, endgames masterclass. Um, you, not all simplifications are the same. So yeah, you, you got yourself in a little trouble here because I think you overestimated your bishop, but... Okay, then he just hung g6. Yeah. Cool. I, I, everything is winning. Yeah. Queen g6. Nice. <coughs> well, that was a game. It was, it was equal for one move. The rest of the game, you were just winning. It would have been better for your opponent to play... Personally, I would have just played knight d5 right away. It's not the best move. I would have just played knight d5. But it's, yeah, I mean, he had to be active. Rook e4. And then, uh, you know, you, you're creating this threat, but he has rook g4, for example. It was a good game, though. It's crazy. Keep in mind that when you get this Vienna Gambit on the board, like, you, you, you accept it. You are... Step on the gas. Queen e1, rook d1, bishop takes f6, etc, etc. You know? I think, uh... You, you, you should know that if they go here, you should not let them get out of the opening. You're doing something wrong if they accept, give you all this, and then you're not just, like, crushing them. But you released your foot a little bit. Still got a nice position. It was solid. Yeah, understanding of this trade is good. That's like pure middle games masterclass right there. It's like, is this trade good for white or bad for white? It's bad. It's not a good trade. You're not ready to make that trade yet. 
You should go here. And I mean, if black also plays like lazily, at some point, yeah, the computer stop move here is g4. I mean... And if black doesn't start fighting back, like if black doesn't come up with counterplay, you're just going g5. For example, h6 just hangs this. So... Right? 